This is still May 31st, 2020. I'm Tony Delane. Anyways, um, you know, I was thinking about Obama. Remember during the Obama years, he was talking about a national security force? Um, if you type in on YouTube, Obama's civilian youth brigade, I think that's what it's titled under one of the videos, Obama's civilian youth brigade. And uh, in his one of his speeches, he was talking about how America needs a national security force that's just as big and just as strong as the armed forces. And um, as you all know, that there's a lot of protests. There are a lot of protests going around, going on in America, in states like uh, Philadelphia, Minnesota, uh, Miami. Detroit, Chicago, just to name a few. And uh, one of the things that I noticed is that, uh, of course, in situations like this, police are normally strapped and handicapped in a way because of the lack of personnel. Although we have a lot of police in the United States, there's no way in the world they can police 320 million people, for one. Two... Not all 320 million people show up at these protests, but the overwhelming number of people that participate in protests, you know, the police are just overtaxed. And so I was thinking tonight, <clears throat> while I'm on patrol, uh, here at one of our local stores, one of the things I notice is that security gets really overlooked until they're actually really, really needed. I mean, even I'm guilty of it. Um, you know, you don't think about security. You look at the security guards, it's like, oh, look at the rental cop. You know, police want to be, get caught all the kind of names. Uh, although, you know, we're armed, and we, we can use deadly force when necessary, or... You know, we can use CPR, we can do CPR, save lives, you know, help people, all those type of things and so forth. Unfortunately, some security guards, well, anyways, I won't go into that. But anyways, you know, I think security plays a significant role in America. And it always has been, like your militias, your posses. Um, I think security is extremely important. I think in the future, we're going to see... A civilian security force larger than the police forces, the police, the police force in the United States. I think it's going to be, if not just as many, it's going to be a lot more. And that's not my opinion. I know that there is something that's coming that's going to be a civilian security force that is going to be apart from government, corporate, that's going to basically be a security apparatus that will be able to handle the volume of, that, of people that's required in the civilian sector when things like Corona-19, I mean, cold Corona, COVID-19, the coronavirus, 9-1-1, uh, 9-11, you know, the bombing in New York, uh, Oklahoma City bombing, etc., uh, mall shootings, or even all the way down to um, crises that are local to a certain state that hit national news or whatever. But I think we're going to see a security force that's going to be formed. A private security force, a uh, corporate security force, if you will, that's going to patrol neighborhoods, um, enforce lockdowns, martial law, curfews, all the fancy words they want to use to make people think that, um, it's not martial law. Um, I think we're going to see that coming here in a, in a very, very new future. And I think you're going to see it sooner than what you might believe. Because what ge what gives me that uh, impression is that today, for example, I got a call from Detroit. Hey, we need you to come to Grand Rapids. We got AR-15s. We got AK-47s um, and other types of weapons uh, to help protect private property. Uh, doing the protest. And I thought to myself, yep, 
if they're calling on security to do these type of things in these type of situations, I think we're going to see more and more of this as time go on. Because a lot of these crises are engineered and manufactured. Not all of them, but many of them are engineered and manufactured. Uh, for political gain, uh, saber rattling, to put fear into people, and a lot of other reasons that I won't go into right now. But <clears throat> a lot of these crises are manufactured. 9-11 was manufactured. O Oklahoma City bombing was manufactured. Yeah, real people get killed. and uh, But real people get killed in all types of wars. You know, false flags. Proxy wars. Whatever you want to call them. It's all warfare. Yeah, people do get killed. And then politicians. Some know what's going on. And some don't know what's going on. But nevertheless... A lot of them, not all of them, get on TV or in the newspapers and they lie to you about what's going on. But anyways, back to my subject, I think we're going to see a security force, a large security force, and I think other nations are going to adopt the same thing. They're going to need a security force that's going to basically enforce enforce the rules or the, the spontaneous uh, management of security that's going to be required as these crises continue to escalate and become more and more frequent. You know, because like Bill Gates said, there's going to be another pandemic. Like I said, they manufacture these things. You know, it's like they got a crystal ball. They don't have a crystal ball. They know because they manufacture these things. They're in the know. You know, if you don't believe it, just do your research on YouTube. I'll talk about those things in future videos uh, and get a little bit more detail. But, yeah, we're, we're going to see more pandemics. The Bible tells you, it's not Bill Gates, but the Bible, Jesus told us there's going to be pandemics, pestilence, earthquakes. But we never knew that there would be weather weapons. We never knew that there would be manufactured, synthetically manufactured bioweapons that would be unleashed on the general public cancer virus, diabetes, cancer, cancer viruses, di diabetes, um, you know, the toxic food, you know, growth hormones, y you guys know, I don't need to, there's enough videos on YouTube to tell you about the fluoride in the water, um, just, those are just a few things that come to mind right now. But these soft kill weapons that are out here designed to basically SARS, the SARS in Asia, the swine flu, AIDS, Ebola, they have all this stuff synthesized and they unleash this stuff on the public for political gain, population control, um, war, profit, you name it, they use it. Um, and eventually I think we're going to see some, some form of nuclear war. I think we may see Star Wars weapons being used as things continue to um, degenerate between the United States and China. And I'm sure Russia will probably get involved in that conflict if that were to happen. I think I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when. Um, so I'm doing everything I can to get prepared. That's why I'm working sometimes 7, 20, 17, 20 hours a day to basically stack my nickels, dimes, and coins in the form of gold and silver to, you know, when the economy decides to reset and transition into a primary digital world economy, uh, having land, being able to grow food. That's why you see me planting fruit trees on the little that I do have. And just doing the basic Boy Scout things, military things, the biblical things to do when I, as I see a storm brewing. Uh, not only in the United States, but worldwide. Uh, some of the things I'm doing, storable foods, buying land, um, buying at least, um, <clears throat> accumulating three to five years worth of storable foods, uh, buying gold and silver, buying land, uh, have land, uh, what else? Uh, hand tools that don't require electrical power or generating gas ge gas generator or anything, manual tools. Uh, I have a whole list of things, guns, uh, bullets, 
And I'm not looking at the end of the world scenario. I'm not looking to go hide out somewhere and be alone. Although I have a place to go out far out if I need to get there. But anyways, that's all I have for right now. Uh, my battery's running short. Maybe I'll do another video. Tony Delang, I'll see you next time.